Hey, what's going on guys and girls? I've been vaping too much, <clears throat> kind of losing my voice, so be, bear with me. Uh, let's see, where do we start? Let's take a look at that solder joint. That's LMR 400. You see it, and it's blown up pretty big. You see a couple tiny, tiny little specks of stuff in there. Not bad though. See how shiny everything is? Right? Well, I got some other stuff to show you. And by the way, if you're going to wimp and whine and rag about this video, unsubscribe, take a hike, go somewhere else. Don't need you. I don't know how to do a video and talk yet with my computer. Maybe one day. We'll see. I'm not in here. I don't do this to be a video guy. Okay? We got that part straight? Good. Okay. You see all those? There's like six of them. Alright. Yeah, this is on my personal page. And I got it like locked down. There's so many trolls and drama kings out there. Whoa! Yeah, I had to take out the screw from my tripod and you just did a backflip. <laughs> So I get it this close to the camera, otherwise the lever in the front hits my laptop. Anyways, I'll try not to let that happen again. So yeah, my I, I, I've been telling a couple people, this is what you do, this is how you do it. I mean, it's old school. I mean, 30-something years ago, this is how you did it, period. I'll try to go through this for you. This is for like Anderson connectors and making connections. Those wires look a bit, little bit ragged. That's okay, they do. But notice... Well, you even notice that, that this thing here, how it's, it looks brand new. That's what I work on. Same thing I got today. This is this goes back benches and benches ago. Anyways, you see the wire. You see how it's kind of wound. It's way longer than it needs to be, but it's sitting on a clean surface. I just took pictures of this randomly. This wasn't to try to show how to do this. And this goes back... Okay. So anyways, like in some other soldering videos, you use the same procedure, everything clean, very clean, and you solder the crap out of them. Don't go all the way up though. If you go all the way up, and I'll try to explain that in a few more pictures, you'll make this like rigid, and then the solder will track up on the inside or wick and go up inside and then make this like brittle up here. You don't want that. There's a way of doing this. Some people say that's the difference between crimping and soldering. Well, if you know how to solder, right, then soldering, I'll take soldering any day over crimping. But there's techniques to this. Got that part, how it wicks. You don't want it wicking up inside, making it rigid. Because then the stiff wires will be stiff on the inside and the outside ones will want to flex and then they'll break, they'll snap. That's logical sense, okay? Physics, logic, common sense. Alright, so you got six of them there. And remember, you're going to cut a lot of this off. Let's go to the next one. Alright. See them? Yep, that's some soldering and that's some filing. Sure is. Time consuming. And that's real AUG. It's not some crap SAE or some other bullshit. That's the real stuff. You can guarantee AUG is rated for what it is exactly supposed to be. So there's six of those. The solder is not all the way up inside. There's a couple of frays it doesn't matter. They will be connected. Okay? They will connect. And let's see. Let me try the next picture. See if I can explain it how. Right, let's go back. So now when you're holding the lug vertically and you better use a vise, you better use some gloves, you better do some practicing or this shit will put you in a world of hurt more than likely in the hospital 
if you get this much solder pouring on you. Bad voodoo. If you're not 18, please talk to your parents before you ever attempt this. I am not a candy ass, trust me, by no means. But this will put you in a world of hurt. Bad, it's lead, tin, alloy, blood poisoning, yeah, and you don't want to breathe the vapors. It's another reason I don't like doing this. So anyways, now you have that lug, you know, vertical, you have it in a vise, you have everything set up to do this, the torch when it's sitting there ain't going to catch your house on fire, even though you can knock it over, you plan your shit out. Really, and this, uh, is it complicated? No. For some, for others it might be, yeah. You know, you really got to pay attention to what you're doing. Now, I'm not trying to sound like nobody's daddy. But if you're trying to do this, safety first. Glasses, gloves, the entire work area. You notice that this won't catch on fire. It'll melt, but it won't catch on fire. If I put the torch to it for 10 minutes, maybe. But anyways, notice how it hasn't wicked up. It's soldered from this end. Well, it's soldered from way down here. And it was longer than it needed to be. And then I held everything together, measured everything. And then cut them all at the same length pretty much the same diameter also they're kind of tapered like this one here you can see it the best it's hard to tell on some of them but they're tapered to a smaller tip at the very ends that's to get them started all right because it's hard it's not this ain't as easy as it looks but will it work really good it'll work exactly the way it's rated and not less all right so now you understand that that's already been wicked, soldered electrically. Let's go to this one. Even though I have this picture horizontally, imagine it standing straight up. And you got it full of solder about right there. It's a lot of solder. This is not in this vise, but a regular vise. You can get it kind of hot in a metal vise because you're going to be using a torch. This thing's pretty damn big. It's about that big, actually. Well, from what I'm looking at on my laptop, so it's off scale in this video. But it's pretty big. It fits six H gauge wires in there. So this was heated up, nice and hot. Elbows down on the table, paying attention. Not wind blowing by it, but the smoke going away from your face. You don't want to screw up doing this. And then, I know it's sideways. It should be standing up. And then this is only going to go in about that far. And I probably have zip ties on this side over here. Okay? Holding everything together so it can't move. And they can all go in, but not the zip tie too close because you've got to feed these in. And it all kind of happens. First it's slow until the, the solder in here gets real hot. And then it starts to melt the solder that you... solder here and then it starts to wick up and then that'll dry you know measure everything first and it drops down inside you got to use your imagination for how much solder comes up to this point pull the flame away put the sponge on now I more than likely had I see some solder there the solder is going to run down it's going to get all over the place that's why I'm saying be careful to do it like this you can see there's no solder inside, and that's pliable. It's all up to about right there. Covered those frayed wires. It's all in there nice and tight, not just a lot of solder. But if you keep it unsoldered at the top, they're more pliable again. Even though it gets very lubricated and well, or wet when you stick it in there with the solder. You don't want the solder being sucked up all the way, otherwise this gets stiff, it burns the, the insulator, etc. Now after you cool it down with the sponge and you got solder all over the place, now you want it cold, literally cold for the next step. You're going to be thinking, hard drive, I got a flipping mess. No you don't. Pay attention. Put it back in the vise, stand it up, or you could do this. I do. I'm used to doing this. Eighteen and over only. 
pay attention to what I'm going to say because you can splash this shit on you. You could actually hold it just like this. Not this torch, but when it's cold, only when it's cold, everything is cold. If you got solder like running down, get your torch to where it's got its hottest point, the blue point. Hold it away and then blast it. Blast it. It'll run right off. Take your torch away, put the sponge to it again. It'll just come right off. Like It'll look like mercury. It'll run off. Cool it. You got somewhere, somewhere else? Do the same thing. There's some right there. Actually, I see a little bit there. Blast it. Blast it. It'll just drip right off. Sponge it. You don't want to heat the inside up anymore. But if you do it real quick on the outside, you're not going to melt it on the inside again. If you kept the heat to it and waited with the sponge, it may affect it, yes. But if you do it quick, blast it real hot, real fast, It'll run off like mercury. And that's what one looks like. Okay. So, that's a 350 right there. Actually, this is configured for 700 amps. If one of these can carry 350 amps Anderson rated and I'll give you a link here in a minute that each one of these can carry 175 amps times 4 is 700 Anderson rated amperage notice how these two are red I know my video sucks I don't know how to do those videos yet but if you have one more Anderson connector you know, right there, carrying the ground, all four of them, that's 700 amps. 175 times 4, see it? We're not talking little. Get the drift? And if you configure these correctly, these can be disassembled and reconfigured however you want and you can buy other plugs for them and reducers I don't recommend the reducers or the crimpers for some of the smaller stuff the little tiny ones yeah if you're gonna do it yourself sure if you buy the tool oh, we don't need that it's an old picture alright so I said I was going to take you to a page. Where's their name? There it is. See it on the top left hand corner? You can see the URL. Let's see if I can back out a little bit. Everything that you need, come on camera, straight now, is really right here. If you can't read it, it's Anderson Power Pole, Power Max. Yeah, you can see it. And like I said, you can get anything that you need here. Back up some more. You can get, you know, the contacts, loose ones. If you want to resolder, reconfigure. These are, that's for the smaller Anderson connectors called the power pole. Alright, see them? A little different styles. I urge you to come to this site and look around. You get plugs for them, you get handles for them. Everything that you're, I mean, even boots, weather boots, sealed, and the prices really aren't that expensive. See the handles? You know, considering the amount of money you got in the wire, the amp, the radio, I mean, come on, look at the prices on this stuff. It's very reasonable. 
So now you got the, the name of the place. You might find others. I figured I'd just take you right to this site. I have a couple other videos on a little bit of soldering. I hope uh, some of this was useful for you guys. Let's see where I'm at. And there you go. Alright. You can get 700 amps out of four connectors. Each one will carry 175. These are called the 350s. I hope some of this was informative. If you tried, to, I know this is easy for some of us, and it is. Some of us have been doing this for 30 something years. Wear gloves, wear glasses. Pay attention to your work. Don't do this on your kitchen table. You need ventilation. Make sure you have enough gas. Make sure you have enough solder. The right solder. You know, install your shrink tube first so that, you know, you don't say, oh shit, you know, I forgot to put it on there. Practice on some old junk wire that goes to my camera. I had to take the little screw out of the front of my tripod, but I think I already said that. But be careful doing this. Again, for some of us, yeah, it's in our sleep. But for if you're just trying this, you could end up in the hospital with scars for life. And don't forget, it's tin, lead, you know, flux, rosin core. And you don't, if you don't know where the connector's been, I mean, that's going to be all mixed in. It's going to go right into your skin. Please be careful. I hope you learned something. Take care, hard drive. 163 down by the Rio Grande. I'm out of here.